What's up guys, Volt here bringing you a brand new Fast and Furious car remake. In today's remake, I'm bringing you the 1968 Dodge Charger RT that Dominic Toretto drives in the Furious 7 and Fate of the Furious. Now this car is also known as the Maximus Charger, which a lot of people know it as. And the main reason for that is because they called it the Maximus and it had 2,000 horsepower, so they called it the Maximus 2000. But later on, they wanted to make sure it looked more or less like a 1968 Dodge Charger. So they called it the Maximus Charger in the movie, and a lot of people just called it that in general. And this is what I came up with for the build. I think it turned out great. The paint job looks amazing. The wheels or the rims in general could be a little bit better. The back end should be a lot wider than the front. Also, they should be a more deep dish in the back than the front. But unfortunately, we cannot do that in GT Online. The build overall looks great. The only sad part about this is that the body should be a wide body. But unfortunately, for this build and for this car, we cannot get a wide body for it. So this is about the best thing I could come up with. And this is the winner of the community question that I posted, what you guys wanted to see next. Also, you will probably also see another build after this because it was a kind of tie between those two but this one did win first so i will definitely put this one up first and then you'll see the next one after this so as always we're going to start off with the base price and we're going to go into the internet we're going to go into the travel and transport website you want to go down to the southern san andreas super autos website you want to go down and you want to find yourself the imponte beater dukes part of los santos summer special now this car is actually fairly cheap it's one of the fairly cheap cars that we actually have for these builds that i've done for a long time and it is three hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars base price and you know normal price in general there is no trade price there's no buy it now price it is just basically three hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars now as you can see it is a bit beat up but you know in the customization you can do you can actually fix it to look like a brand new car so once you have your car and you have your color meet us at the los santos customs which we can customize our car at i was also thinking about doing it at the ls car meet or the agency but i feel like just the lighting in this place is literally like one of the best it's like right underneath benny's benny's has the best lighting for the most part but I mean, I can't go there because this is not a Benny's vehicle. Maybe in the future it will be and we can turn it into a wide body. Doubtful, but you never know. Rockstar might just make a brand new car and call it the Beater Wide Body Dukes or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, let's go inside and customize the beauty. So as we pull in, the Aponte Beater Dukes is in the muscle category. Pretty much self-explanatory. It should be based around a Dodge Charger for the most part. I would say 1968 to maybe 1970 somewhere around that range. So as I say in all my videos, I go over the overall look, the visual appearance, and the basic design of the car and how it's portrayed in the movie, game, or anywhere else in general itself. Anything I don't go over is completely up to you. I just put a few staples in on my build. If you want to take some things away from my build, just follow along with the video. Take the things that you want away from my build, add it to your own, and then build the car however you wish. Again, it is your money and your car. Build it however you wish. If you want to recreate the one that I created here, that's awesome. If not, then I still respect your decision. So without further ado, Let's get into the build. So to start things off, we're going to go to front bumper. You want to put on the repaired front splitter. This is going to actually add that nice, decently sized splitter on the front. We do want a splitter on there. It shouldn't be as big as this, but this is the best option we can get. And I still think it does look the best. Plus, it also repairs the front end. As you can see, it's all beat up. As you can see, beat or dukes. That's kind of an expl explanation there. So you definitely want to go with that repaired front splitter. From there, we move on to the exhaust. I kept the stock exhaust mainly because it was a chrome-tipped exhaust, like a chrome big actually a decently sized chrome exhaust and the sad part is the next one down is the round exhaust they're kind of cut off at an angle and then all the other ones are either on the side or they are quad tipped or box tipped which we don't want so yeah i think the stock exhaust is still the best option for the maximus charger after that we move on to the fenders you want to go with the repaired fenders now i was actually thinking about the fender flares to give it a little bit more of a wide body design but they have bolt-ons and we don't want bolt-ons i just don't think it looks or fits well I think the design I came up with looks pretty decent, even though it's not wide body. You still kind of get that aspect of it. So I would definitely go with the repaired fenders. That way it's not all bent in like that. You just want to make sure it's nice and repaired and beautiful. From there, move on to the grill. I went with the crown grill. It had like the bars going across the front instead of like the mesh or whatever. Like instead of it being mesh or anything, it had more of like a lateral vertical and horizontal bars going across it. So like more of a grill look like shape to it, if that makes any sense. Again, I'll be showing pictures down the left hand corner as I always do. But yeah, this is the one I think that fits the best, which is the crown grill. From there, move on to the hood. You want to go with the inset hood. I think this fits the best. Now, again, you know, you do have the stock hood, which is all damaged and everything. You also have the damaged inset hood. So I guess if you want to create a build that's kind of like damaged, you can do that. But I still think that the inset hood is the best option. I think it fits the best. It has like the, the middle line going down there. It also has the insets on the hood that actually go down, like the hood insets, which is really nice. That's actually on the car. 
and it just fits the build really nicely. From there, move on to the lights. You want to go to headlights, and you just want to keep them stock. I definitely wouldn't change them. They're more like a yellowish old style, like charger, but definitely from 1968 color-wise, I would say. And yeah, older style is better, and that's definitely what you want to go with. Don't go with xenons. Don't ruin it. From there, move on to the neon kits. Neon lamps can be none because it was, I guess, pretty much a bare bone design. Like it was, it didn't even have any paint on it. It was just, you know, metal. I would just go with none. I didn't see any, plus it wasn't driven at night, so we didn't really know if there was any. Could have been, but again, we don't really know. And I just tried to go with the information that I do know, so I just go with none. From there, we move on to the livery. You just want to go with none. It didn't have no livery or anything. It wasn't rusted or any kind of like weird design. It was pretty much bare metal. Now, I know in a video that I watched actually about the real life car, they wanted to paint it black, but they just instead decided to keep it bare metal. And honestly, their choice was a lot better than making it black. I have seen a lot of builds have black charges and everything, but I feel like this build just screams bare metal with how much horsepower and everything it had. So yeah, I would definitely just go with the bare metal design and just don't add a livery to it. From there, move on to the louvers. You just want to add no louvers. It's a nice clear back rear window. From there, move on to the mirrors. You want to go with the circular mirrors, mainly because there's one on each side. And in the movie, it actually shows one on each side. Sad part is in real life and at the car show that I watched for the actual car, it only had this one here, which was the stock mirror. So it didn't have one on the passenger side, but it did have one on the driver's side the mirror actually was this design but it only had one but i still think if you're trying to copy the one from the movie i would definitely go with the circular mirrors best design and best choice in my opinion from there we move on to the plate you want to go with a blue and white two and the custom plate you want to make is two s a m five six four again that is two s a m five six four now this is the custom plate that's in the movie and i believe probably on the real life car as well and it just it fits really well and it actually is able to be put on so it really works really well also the blue and white 2 is kind of like the same design of plate that they have for the car i believe they're still in california i believe but i could be wrong but this is about the closest thing i can come up with for the design and the blue and white 2 just fits really well with the custom plate so that's why i went with same refrain last we move on to the roll cage i went with the street cage mainly because it did have a roll cage in it at some points you can see in the movie again i'll post some pictures and everything that you can see the other ones are a bit too like weird colored like i don't know why they're like an ugly brown or yellowish these will over pretty well especially like this one here the roll cage and chassis upgrade but, I mean, I wanted to try to keep the seats as stock and, like, the interior as stock as possible because that's pretty much what they were going for. It was, like, you know, basic 19... 68 Dodge Charger interior with a lot more horsepower and everything in it. It had a roll cage, but I mean, if you go with anything above the street cage, you're going to start acting track seats in, which doesn't fit the build and it definitely didn't fit the build for the movie. So I would definitely just go with the street cage. Best option, in my opinion. From there, we move on to the roof. I went with the painted roof. You don't want a nice black roof. I mean, it just doesn't fit the build. It was all one color, all one solid metal. So I would definitely go with the painted roof. All the other ones just add liveries and such. So I would definitely just go with the painted roof. From there, we move on to the spoiler. I would definitely wouldn't add one, mainly because it didn't have one. Most of the time when you see a charger, it doesn't have a spoiler. There are some chargers that actually do have spoilers, which I'll, you know, I actually made a few about that, I think. But as of right now, I mean, I didn't see any on the car and there's not one that really fits it but other than that i just keep it stock from there move on to the suspension now this is going to be a little bit of controversy on my part so again it was a wide body so we can't really tell how lowered it was but from the pictures and everything i've seen I, it was pretty lowered unfortunately you know most of the time i say do not lower a muscle car but for this one to make it look a little bit closer to the build i would definitely lower it down to competition suspension get a little bit lower down it also kind of makes it like go over top the rims and like the wheels and everything to make it kind of feel like it's more of a wide body design now this is about probably one of the only few cars that i say that you know actually go with the competition suspension for a muscle car but i still think it fits the best and i mean at the most you could probably go with would be like maybe a lowered i mean it doesn't lower it too much it just lowers it enough to kind of give that little bit of you know illusion of a kind of wide body light car and i just think it looks and fits best from there move on to the turbo you do want to add a turbo i mean i'm pretty sure it probably has a supercharger in it but i believe what i was watching in the video about the actual real life car it was twin turboed so yeah i mean it's it's kind of hard to tell i know they went with a hemi i don't know if it was twin turboed or if it had a supercharger but i know it was definitely pushing 2000 horsepower so i mean you want to make this car as fast as possible i mean 2000 horsepower that's extremely fast i would say definitely go with a turbo tuning just to add that little bit extra horsepower a little bit extra oomph in the game from there we move on to the wheels now there are a few options i'm gonna 
recommend that you could choose. I'm gonna show you what I chose first and then I'll go over a few other alternative options. So you wanna to go to wheel type, you wanna go down to the track category and I put on the retro three piece rims. Now these I think fit the best because they have the five rivets like in the middle design. Unfortunately there's like a bunch of holes around the top but it does have a bit of chrome around it and at a certain angle and certain distance and everything it looks relatively close to the real life rims. The real life rims are solid steel like all the way around and then they have like the five rivets or like a, like a five piece that actually holds it right in the middle. Uh, again, I'll be showing pictures to, so you can better understand, but I think these fit the best. Another great option that I would also go for is if you go to like the low rider category, you go to the chrome rims and you put on the lead sled rims. I think these also fit really well because they do have like the middle part to it. It's all one solid color, all one piece of, you know, it's also chrome by the way, it's all the way chrome. Unfortunately, the ones I have on aren't chrome, they're actually alloy because Rockstar, you know, make chrome rims out of the new ones. But yeah, the lead sled ones are actually a really good choice as well. So the two I think fit the best actually are the lead sled or the ones that I choose which are the retro three piece. Another option if you don't think the rims are big enough you could also go with possibly the stove top. Still has the five spoked in there but it has bigger holes. The main reason I went with the retro three piece is mainly because the holes are a little bit smaller not as noticeable and it still gives that kind of illusion and look to like the real life rims but again you can choose what you want. These are the ones I'm going for. I may change my mind and I will definitely let you know with the top 10 comment if I do any changes on the builds. Do always check there. After that, I move on to the wheel color. I kept mine alloy. Again, I can't make them chrome. And the frost white just looks terrible. Stone silver, nothing looks close to the chrome other than alloy. So I would just definitely go with alloy if you go with my rims. If you go with the chrome low rider rims, then just keep them chrome. You don't need to worry about changing them. And you're good on that. From there, move on to the tires. Tire design is gonna be nothing. You don't want any custom tire text on there or anything. So just keep them stock. Tire enhancements, you can add bulletproof tires on if you wish. Probably more realistic if you don't. So that's your choice though. And tire smoke's definitely gonna be white tire smoke. From there, move on to the wheelie bar. You wanna go with the repaired rear bumper, mainly because when you first buy it, it is completely smashed in, dented, and just looks not great. So you wanna make it look a lot more pristine and clean and also repaired. So you wanna go with that repaired rear bumper. Anything else you don't want, it doesn't have a wheelie bar or a chute, so just go with that repaired rear bumper. From there, move on to the windows. You wanna go with none. They didn't have no window tint. It was nice and clean, crystal clear windows. I thought maybe it had like a light smoke to it, but no, it doesn't. Just keep it nice and clean. It just kind of fits the bill, you know? A nice, clean metal design design for the paint color and it's just nice clean windows just fits really well especially with the chrome rims too just looks great again i might change my rims i'm not sure it's just i'm gonna probably play around with it a bit more but these i think fit the best so far and these are the ones i'm gonna go for all right and i'll see you guys in two seconds with a rolled steel primer color all right, and we're back. As you can see, I have my car and my primer out rolled steel. Pretty much what I always do for, you know, like a base primer color, so you know what I'm doing. Whether it's gonna be a custom crew color or an LSC color. This time, it's gonna be just a straight up LSC color. There's no custom crew color for it. I think the LSC colors work great, and to get like a metal design, it's the best option to go for is the metals. So that's what I went for, and I, it's gonna actually involve a glitch. It's not hard to do. If you have custom plates, it's pretty much free for the most part. If you don't, it's gonna cost you like maybe one or $200, really not much at all. And I'll actually go through it with you in this video. So we're gonna go to the primary color. You wanna go down to the metals and you wanna put on the brush steel. Now this is gonna get that nice, you know, basic metal look to it. And it's just gonna look beautiful. I mean, it's gonna look amazing, especially for this build. After that, we move on to the secondary color. Again, you wanna go down to the metals and you wanna go and put on the brush steel. Again, this will make it all pure bare metal. And that's exactly what you wanna do for the build. So now you're probably thinking, what do you need to do for the glitch part? Well, what you need to do is you need to add a pearlescent to it to make it even shinier than what it is right now. Because you want bare metal. This is bare metal, but you want it even better than this. So you wanna to go to primary, you wanna go down to the pearlescents. And as you can see, you can't do that. So in order to bypass this, you need to go up to metallic. You need to just actually hover over this. You can actually go over it if you want to, or you can just sit on one color like you do with the black section right here. You just sit on this, and you want to sit on it for about eight to 10 seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Back out, and you want to go and purchase something that's really cheap. I recommend a plate, either a custom plate, or just if you don't have a custom plate, buy the regular plates because it's only very cheap. There we go, I bought mine. Again, if you don't have a custom plate, just buy the regular plates, they're very cheap, like two, two hundred dollars or something like that and then you just switch it right back you don't really need to keep it on that you need to switch it right back so then you need to go back go back into respray go back into the primary color go down to pearlescence and as you can see it automatically removes that the pearlescent that is on it right now i'm not sure exactly what's on the brush steel but i know that it is probably something that you can't get in the lsc because when you actually go to it it just goes right straight to black it doesn't actually highlight a color 
as you can see, like if I go to the metals, it doesn't have the a car icon on it. If it does have the car icon on it, then it'll actually tell you that it actually is on it right now. But if you go to pearlescence, it's going to show that it has nothing. So it must be an unattainable pearlescent, unfortunately. But we want to make it a lot shinier, a lot brighter. So what I recommend is actually adding a pearlescent of frost white to it. Again, this will get this nice, beautiful, bright, shiny, bare metal design, and it just looks absolutely phenomenal. And again, it doesn't take much to do this little glitch, and you're not going to get in trouble for doing it. It's just kind of a workaround to actually add a little bit more shine to it. Not only can you use this glitch for the metals, but you can also use it for the matte and the classic as well. I mean, classic is pretty much metallic, just not as bright. So you can actually add a pearlescent to it if you really wanted to, but that's completely up to you. I mean, a lot of people would probably use this for a matte or the metals. Me personally, matte and metals are probably the best options to do this pearlescent glitch for. I wouldn't really recommend using it on classic. I just use classic if I don't want to add a pearlescent or if it's just a basic color. I don't really worry about that that much. But that is what you do to add that nice, beautiful bare metal shine to it and just make it look even shinier than what it was before. And it just looks really great. It really does. And that is it. That's how you recreate the 1968 Dodge Charger RT that Dominic Toretto drives in Furious 7 and part of, I think, Fate of the Furious as well. And, you know, the Maximus Charger is what most people call it as. Again, I think it turned out really well. I'm probably going to still play around with the rims a bit. So let's go outside. Probably going to be nice and dark out. Yep, there we go. I am in a public session, as you can see, 28 people. Apparently no one ever really uses the LSC anymore. There's like no one around here. Oh, there's actually a couple people modding stuff in the uh, LS car meet, or the LSC. I don't know why I keep on calling it the LS car meet. But as you can see, in the dark, you know, it's not too overpowering. You don't really see too much different color on it. I mean, yellow from the light right there, but that's just the street light. You'll probably see a little bit of blue here and there if you go in the dark. Like, if you see this, it's kind of like, I mean, it's a bare metal design and it looks really great. Again, it is a muscle car, so you can do the wheelie. Doesn't really that great, <laughs> from my opinion, but I'm not the greatest at wheeling things, so... You can play around with the suspension if you really wanted to, but I still think the lower suspension is the best. It just kind of gives that aspect of the wide body. As you can see, at certain angles here. I'm just trying to get like a... Yeah, see? So, it looks really great. I think it turned out really well. And, again... I think I probably didn't put this on screen, but I will do this right now. Oh. So the people that actually wanted this car, or actually wanted this car, I'll put the top comment on there. Also, I'll see if I find any more comments about this because I think I had this build requested a lot longer ago and I just kind of got around to it. I, I built it, I just never really got around to making the video. But this is what you guys wanted to see. That was one of the ones that won, so there we go. The other one is something that a lot of people requested too. Got a lot of requests for a long time ago. I got to work on a little bit more, but you'll definitely see that within the next, I would say, week or so. It'll be coming out pretty soon. Overall, I'm happy with the build. I wish we had a wide body design for this. I mean, the color turned out great. I wish we had better rims too, but other than that. So anyways, I think that's going to be where I'm going to wrap up the video. I know a lot of people complain about me talking so much about useless stuff and everything, but it's just, I like to give information. I like to give details. I like to give as much background information and pictures and information as I can not only for my builds but for actually you guys as well if you guys don't know what the car is from or where it's from or where how it's built and the information around it and the background and all the specs and everything as much as I can so yeah that's gonna pretty much be it for the video so I hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to like subscribe hit that notification bell leave a comment down in the comment section down below for what build you want me to do next I'll definitely get back to you whether I can do your build or not I might have to give me like a day or two to get back to you but I definitely will get back to you I try to pride myself on communicating with you guys whether you're subscribed or not I just want to you know provide a good experience for you guys that you guys actually request certain things or you actually guys that you guys actually want something apparently something's going on over there yeah that's I try to pride myself on communication wise and you know whether I can do it or I can't do the build I'll definitely let you know I don't want to give you false hope but I want to give you the straight up truth if I can do it or not if I have something that's close then I'll let you know with all that being said hope you guys have a great day thanks for watching thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you guys in the next one I'll catch you guys later I'm out peace